trackers. Trackers. What are they? Why are they? Well, to answer the first question, a tracker is a type of music production software categorized by the uses of audio samples and by having a text-based vertical layout. But a description like that doesn't really tell us what any of this is, so let's go a little deeper. Take one of these strips for example. It functions like a music box. Every hole punched in the paper represents a note being played. When you scroll down the paper, these notes form a full piece of music. So a tracker is like a giant sheet of paper that allows you to punch in as many notes as you want and even add extra modifiers to those notes such as arpeggios and vibratos. That's cool and all, but we still have another question to answer. Why are trackers? To answer that, we have to travel back in time to the 1980s. Home computers are more popular than ever, and video games and other multimedia software can be found everywhere. One important question must be asked though, how does all this software handle audio? We're still years away from any storage media that has enough space to store fully rendered music files. Your average floppy disk only stores 1.5 megabytes of data. A common solution was to use MIDI files, a sequence of notes with no audio included that will be sent to the PC's sound card or MIDI capable synthesizer. This was a space efficient way to store music, but with the large variety of sound cards and synthesizers at the time, there was no standardized way to play these songs back. A song could sound drastically different from one piece of hardware to the other. Or it could even be completely unlistenable on some. Enter the ultimate sound tracker and later iterations of it such as Noise Tracker and Pro Tracker. These programs would allow you to sequence a song using your own instrument samples, utilizing the Commodore Amiga's Paula sound chip. Both the song data and the sample data are then stored in a single file known as a module. Now you didn't need to rely on a sound card or a MIDI synthesizer. And no matter what computer you'd play your module on, it would reproduce it using exactly the same sounds. Because of the low file sizes and the standardized playback, ProTracker modules found their way into many video games in the early 90s. Eventually, tracker software found its way to platforms other than the Amiga, such as DOS with Impulse Tracker and Scream Tracker. Their formats supported way more features and functions than their predecessors did, allowing composers to create even better sounding music while still keeping the file size low. Not only video games featured tracker music, the low file sizes meant that trackers also saw widespread usage in the demo scene, which is where a lot of developmental tracker software could be found. For instance, Scream Tracker was developed by the demo group Future Crew, who utilized it for the soundtracks to their demos in the early 90s. The demo scene originated from crack intros and key gens, which utilized tracker modules as their music of choice. These songs had to be as tiny as possible in order to be used, so they would feature extremely limited sounds and instruments. This type of music would later be known as chiptune, before that became a catch-all term for music written for other limited sound chips. Low file sizes meant that tracker modules were easy to share with others. Bulletin boards were a common place to distribute songs. And around the end of the 90s, net labels started to pop up, featuring a large selection of tracker artists. Trackers also found their way into the hands of home producers. With studio equipment being extremely expensive, tracker software turned into a really common way of creating electronic music on a low budget. A lot of early drum and bass tracks were produced using software like Octomat on a Commodore Amiga. Other artists used tracker software to create music too, such as Calvin Harris and Apex Twig. We're currently in a much more modern era. Music production software has become a lot more advanced, and with higher capacity storage and internet speeds, it would seem like trackers are obsolete, right? Yet with how standardized and low-spec the tracker interface is, they've seen widespread adaption on all sorts of platforms. There's little sound DJ for the Nintendo Game Boy. 
various tools for composing on other types of hardware such as Family Tracker and Bethel Mask, and new hardware trackers such as the Mate, NerdSec and Polyend Tracker. The most well-known tracker software has to be Modbook Tracker, an open source program for Windows that supports all of the most common module formats, which is still being used and developed to this day. It's completely free too. So, ever since they were created, trackers have been an incredibly flexible tool for a variety of users. Whether you're a video game composer, a music producer, a demo scener or just a hobbyist, trackers have shaped a large portion of electronic music and video game history, and they've remained as important and open-ended to this day. It's been nearly 35 years since trackers were first conceptualized, 35 years of all sorts of wonderful music being created with them. Even to this day, people are still pushing the boundaries of what can be done with trackers. So, here's to another 35. Hey there, thank you for watching the video. This isn't really the type of content that I usually make because this is mostly a music account, but I felt like this was important enough to dedicate a video to. Also, if you want to hear any of the music I make using trackers, there's going to be a bunch of links in the description. There's also uh, a lot of music already on the channel if you want to check that out. This video was also brought to you by Pools Wave. How do you pronounce it? Goddamn it. Uh, Pools Wave. We're a brand new inclusive community for all sorts of things related to trackers and chiptune. Uh, there's going to be regular chiptune battles and other competitions. So if you're interested in that, you can also check the description for an invite link if you want to join. That's pretty much all I have to say, so once again, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video.